Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 45 of Builders Talk. Today, I wanted to talk to you probably about a little bit more of a personal story. And I guess it's sort of like a day in the life of a husband and wife building team driving home from the city yesterday morning. So I'm sure a lot of people can relate at the moment about, I guess, the feeling of being overwhelmed. And I'm seeing a lot of chatter on online about people being overwhelmed at the moment about what is happening in the building industry. And I certainly am overwhelmed. And I guess I became quite overwhelmed yesterday when we were driving back home from Brisbane. Um, I, I guess when I become over, I know when I'm really overwhelmed when I can't even remember conversations that I've had with someone five minutes before and I can't, you know, I just, I just have that much in my brain that I can't even remember things that I've said or people have asked me to do and I'm thinking, is this just now be, I'm getting to the age where I'm just losing my memory or I'm become getting dementia, but I'm pretty sure it's the circumstances that we're working in and how much I guess we're having to deal with at the moment. And, you know, times are tough and many outside of the industry might disagree with this. And I guess this is adding to our overwhelm, but from outside, pe people are just seeing builders have got all this work, so we must be bringing in all this money and only the people that are within the industry probably understand what is happening and how much overwhelm and how much stress a lot of the small businesses are actually under at the moment. And there is a lot of contributing factors to that current environment that we're working in. And there's not really any end in sight, which makes it harder to, I guess, process and, and move through and and think, oh, tomorrow's going to be better or next week's going to be better or it's only temporary thing, we can get through this. But we've probably been dealing with this definitely for at least the last year. Obviously, since COVID started, we've had, you know, things that we've been having to deal with that are differently within our businesses. And I have spoke on a previous episode, I think it was episode 43, about um, the predictions of what I think will happen within the industry in 2022. And on the weekend, we went down to Brisbane to watch our son's first football match of the season. So he's moved to Brisbane to finish his last year of school. He was offered a scholarship for football, um, soccer type football. So we drove down on Saturday, uh, sorry, on Sunday to go and watch his first game of the season. And when we were coming back home yesterday, I found myself probably by about nine o'clock in the morning dreading that day. I was sitting in the car listening to my husband, the builder, organise his day while we drove home. You know, there was phone calls to trades to see where they were at. There was phone calls to suppliers. There was, you know, to get them to get orders to site. I was on the phone chasing up fans for a job because the electrician was coming that day and they'd been ordered two months ago and we, were still, we still hadn't received two of those fans. I was chasing up, chasing up quotes for Rio and when I was talking to one of the suppliers that I'd sent the quote through to, he mentioned that he hadn't been able to open the engineering plans and so he hadn't done the quote. And, you know, I was thinking to myself, well, why wouldn't he just come back and say, I can't open the plans, can you resend me the plans? And, you know, my husband couldn't get a hold of three of the trades who were meant to be on site and when he finally got a hold of one of them, they advised that they weren't there, they weren't on the job today, um, you know, they hadn't made any contact with my husband to say they weren't coming so he assumed they were coming and I guess I just started to feel really overwhelmed with the fact that I felt like we couldn't move forward, that everything that had been planned wasn't happening that day and that was another day that we wouldn't be able to push our job forward and we wouldn't be able to get our progress payment um, and, you know, it, it started to weigh on me and sort of started making me think, well, how, how can we get these jobs finished? Like, you just feel like every turn of that, any every corner that you turn, there's another thing that we have to jump over to try and get those homes moving forward, you know, in a decent amount of time. You know, he had, I reckon, about three or four phone calls between the concrete, the concrete, concrete pump guy, the concrete supplier, all to try and coordinate two jobs that suited all those different people. And 
then he sort of turned to me and said, I don't even remember what day I've now actually booked that into. And I said, I don't know how you remember any of it. And so that got us on to talking about how I could help him to make sure that he didn't forget those days that he booked in everything in because it's changing so quickly that he thinks it's happening one day when he's actually it's actually been changed to another day. So that then obviously he organises things around that and then that doesn't happen. So then he's letting down other people. And I've seen on Facebook, you know, people saying about, oh, the builders called us up to go to the job and then we get there and it's not ready. And, you know, these are the things that we're trying to deal with and coordinate that, you know, one person lets the chain down at one spot, which then has a chain reaction all the way down through all the other trades and supplies for that that job that was trying to get done. And all of this while we're trying to na navigate through the peak hour traffic in Brisbane, whilst we then had to go and pick up some sort of a few sheets of tiles that we were short for a job for one of our pools. And I didn't say anything to my husband about how overwhelmed I was feeling, but then him on top of that, you know, trying to, trying to beat Siri at her, you know, we had the maps on to get us from where our son currently lives because we're not from Brisbane, you know, through the city and, and out the other side to head north to head back to Harvey Bay. And he likes to try and beat Siri. So Siri's telling us to go one way and he's constantly telling me to check and see if I can find another way that might be quicker. And I'm like, Siri's the quickest, she's got the quickest one. Just let's just relax and, and follow the thing. So then you know, we start having an argument about why can't you just let the maps tell us where to go and just relax? Why do you have to keep trying to... So all this on top of <laughs> trying to, I guess, you know, organise the day that he thought had been organised so that we could have that morning off had all basically gone to shit. Um, and I, to I totally understand that, you know, being a builder is not easy. And he turned to me at some point and said, see, the job isn't easy. And, yes, I understand that. And... You know, but I think at the moment it, it's making things are a lot more difficult and the amount of time that builders are spending on the phone just rearranging work is absolutely ridiculous. You know, then he rings the labourer to get them to take the scaffolding down from the void of one of the home but told them to check that the electrician and the air conditioning guys had put up their, um, had put the down lights in and the vents for the, the ducted air conditioning before he took it down. So then he rings back to say, no, the events for the air conditioning are not up, which were meant to be done last week. So then there has to be a phone call to the air conditioning guy. Hi, Amber, how are you going? Phone call to the air conditioning guy, you know, that, why aren't you there? When are you coming there? I need to get the scaffolding down. I've sent the guys out to pull it down. And he's like, oh, no, I, I didn't know you were pulling the scaffolding down that day. We'll be there later today. And he's like, but the guy I spoke to said you're going to do it on Friday. So now I've arranged everything around that. So then all those plans fall, fell apart. So then he had an apprentice and a labourer there to pull it all down. And then he had to try and rearrange what they had to do because they had to leave the scaffolding up. And then finally, when the scaffolding had been pulled down, my husband walked into the job, saw a small nail hole in the ceiling that no one had patched or no one had thought to say to him, you know, so he rang the painter and said, there's the hole, this hole in the ceiling. Why didn't you tell me? He's like, well, the plaster is meant to do that. And he's like, yeah, but the plaster obviously didn't fit, see it. So now, you know, you've just painted over it and not told anyone. Now I've put the scaffolding down. Now I've got to put the scaffolding back up. So, you know, all of this at 9 o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting in the passenger seat thinking, oh, my God, like it's already only 9 o'clock in the morning and everything has just turned to what it shouldn't have been for that day. We are meant to have, you know, spent the weekend with our son, he played his first football match. We'd made sure that he had settled down into Brisbane quite well and that, you know, our family was was happy and everything was going well. And so I guess it was the first time that I'd actually heard him say to me he can't remember the things he had organised and, you know, he couldn't or didn't know when he'd booked the pump. So me turning into I need to fix this, you know, type arrangement, I was like, okay, well, why don't you tell Siri the date and time of the booking so that she can add it to your calendar. So we tested her out and we asked Siri to add appointments to the calendar and, you know, she added them in and I said, right, that's good because now I can be proactive enough to know that you've booked that pump in in four to eight days' time or you've booked the plumber in so that then I can see that in the calendar and then I can go and check to make sure that, say, if the plumber's coming in to do his fit-off, I can then make sure that all the supplies are on site and there's no delay for when the plumber gets there so that he can do his job properly and we can push the job forward. 
So all that happened on the phone, on the way home, numerous phone calls, lots of phone calls between people trying to just rearrange the day. And then we arrived back home and I had to meet a client at the stonemasons to help them choose their stone bench tops. And the colour they had originally chose, they decided they wanted to change it. And that would mean they'd have to change the colour of the doors for their kitchen. And I knew the carcass had been made, but I wasn't sure about the doors. So I tried to call my husband and I couldn't get through to him, as usual. And the client laughed and he said, oh, no surprises there. And I sort of said to the client, yeah, I know everyone thinks that I can get a hold of him, but see, I can't even get a hold of him. And while we were standing there, I reckon I called him about seven times to try and get through to him to find out if the client could change their kitchen colours before we sort of agreed that that was the bench top colour they were going to go ahead with. So, you know, the, I guess this compounded the overwhelm that I was already feeling from that, that morning. But I guess what also added to that overwhelm was while we were driving through Brisbane on the radio, I heard that they were going to be talking to the deputy CEO of the Master Builders Queensland. And I'd seen a news article on Facebook the night before about some experts saying that there'll be a lot more builders that are going to go under. And when I read the comments from the public and from other trades and other people in the industry, I couldn't really believe, well, I could, the comments that were being made about builders and how they felt about builders and how we were the cause of, you know, many people losing their money or their livelihood and that we were greedy and we were just swimming in all our fortunes. So I assumed that this radio interview was obviously in response to this article. But I was really impressed with the discussion by the deputy CEO and his ability to articulate the current issues, you know, that, that builders are dealing with. You know, we are facing the, the fact that, that there's been price increases and some incre there's been some materials that have gone up 100%. You know, the shortages and the delays you know, they're some of the main contributing factors to the fact that builders are going under at the moment. And yes, we've made a rod for our own back with the race to the bottom price war type attitude that a lot of builders have and get themselves into. And maybe this might be a wake up call, I guess, for many of us to start to cut out this behaviour. And we need to ensure that we are not pricing to just make a sale. We need to have the ability to, and the wiggle room to deal with some extent of market fluctuations. And obviously to not, not this extent, no one could have ever predicted that we would be in this situation we're currently in. But maybe this is a pivotal turning point to get some, I guess, regulative changes that do help protect the builders, you know, like the ability to adjust our pricing under certain conditions. Even if those that are locked in fixed price contracts had the ability to wear a certain percentage of the price increases, and then maybe after that, it was worn by both parties, the, the, the owner and the builder. So this environment will force businesses to make some changes to the way that they do business, you know, to the jobs that they may take on, to the people that they work with. And it's time for us to take back some of the reins in our business, ensure that we can have a sustainable business, that we can survive through tougher times. You know, what changes will you make? You know, how are you going to future-proof your business? So if you're looking to get some support to help, I guess, make these decisions, you can book a call with me on my angelascott.com.au website and I can direct you to some resources that may help you lead your business out of this climate and overwhelm that so many business owners are feeling at the moment. So until next week, keep powering your business.